Okay, fam, welcome back. So we're going over the grayscale trust today. So with that being said, let's get it. All right, so I wanted to start out on the smaller time frames here. Um, again, this is not something I usually do, but I kind of want to just reiterate that this thing mostly is really just going sideways, okay? It's not really doing much of anything. Usually when this thing goes sideways, it means it's getting ready to consolidate to go either up or down. As they say, when in, when in doubt, zoom out. So uh, this is uh, <laughs> not just talked about in crypto. This is general um, sage advice and knowledge. Again, I'm not giving financial advice, but it's, it's sage knowledge in the uh, finance space. When in doubt, zoom out. If you're not sure where you think something is going to go, maybe look at a higher time frame. All right. So I'm going to start here on the daily on LTCN. So we are in the bull zone on both the MACD and the RSI. That's a very bullish indicator. Um, we have broken the downtrend line, the macro downtrend line on the RSI on the daily time frame. That's also a very bullish indicator. Uh, you can see that we have done this also on the weekly time frame, and we're getting ready to get that golden cross on the MACD on the weekly time frame. And we also got the break of the, the white trend line, downtrend line here, and we're kind of sitting at this macro support. Again, this thing has mostly been moving sideways at macro support. Uh, once the crypto market starts to lift, it would be my guess that this thing is going to go up from this point. So before I actually get into the actual numbers of the Grayscale Trust, there is a few things that I want to point out here about the upcoming events, okay? So we've talked about this on X, but... Here's the most important things you need to know, okay? So we have earnings season starting this week. Okay, the banks report on Friday. We already told you this. If you're not following us on X, give us a follow. Um, the link should be somewhere on the somewhere on the channel. I'm not sure where you might have to find it, uh, maybe on the channel page or something. But um, yeah, so the bank, a lot of the big banks, even smaller banks too, and BlackRock, they start reporting earnings this week. And we have earnings season going through the end of the year, okay? So... Here's my expectations for now going through the end of the year, okay? In my opinion, earnings are going to be very good. Uh, I think they're actually going to be better than most people's expectations. I think a lot of people are going into earnings season very bearish. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's got to be a recession now, guys. we got to have that recession. We just have to have that recession. <laughs> Look, in my opinion, there's not going to be a recession, okay? It's an overcrowded trade. Everybody's bearish. That's why I think the bears are going to get wrecked. Um, that's just my opinion, but I'm, I'm pretty confident in my uh, stance here on where I think the markets are going to go. So there's that. Um, I think earnings are going to be very, very good. Uh, we also have data this week, jobs data. Um, trying to remember what it is. So CPI, I'm expecting CPI to come in slightly lower than expectations, indicating to the markets that they can rally because, again, the inflation narrative, it's cooling off. A lot of people are concerned. They're bearish on the potential of the Fed cutting too aggressively too fast. And, oh, if they do that, then inflation is going to resurge. Guys, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a, rec a resurgence of inflation. Okay. Gone over this before. When inflation surges, it takes a while for the Fed after they hike rates for the cooling aspect of inflation to actually begin. It's a lagging effect. Okay. So, the, I'll, I'll have to go over this separately uh, in detail in a video, but basically the Fed didn't start raising rates until inflation was almost at its peak, okay? And while they were raising rates, inflation was dropping, but it took time for inflation to drop, okay? So if there was going to be a resurgence in inflation, which in my opinion there's not going to be, it would take time for that to actually play out, okay? It's not going to happen instantly in one month or three months, maybe not even in six months, Okay. If we were going to see a resurgence, a resurgence of inflation, it's going to take months, uh, probably somewhere between 6 to 12 months to actually play out, maybe even 9 to 12 months, okay? I'd say probably closer to 9 to 12 months. That's if we were going to get a resurgence of inflation. In my opinion, that's not going to happen, okay? I think inflation's dead. I think the Fed has it fully under control at this point, and I do not think they would have pivoted um, unless they were completely certain that inflation was not going to come back. Okay, that's the Fed's job. That's one of the one of the aspects of their dual mandate, which is to control inflation, to make sure life is affordable for people, so the system can go on, right? So everybody can work and make money and 
be a slave to the system. I, I'm, again, I'm not trying to inf- offend anybody, but those who are rich are the freest in society. We all know this. Okay. Um, and yeah, in order for the system to work, uh, they need people to be able to afford things so they can pay taxes and whatnot. Okay. So it's a double edged sword for the fed. They have to keep inflation at a certain level. That's their mandate by Congress. Um, but on the other side of the fence, they have to make sure unemployment doesn't get out of control. So again, I've already talked about this. Okay. They, they, uh, nixed the switch between, uh, basically tightening and cutting at the exact right moment. And that's my opinion. Okay. And I believe that that's going to be the case. So, um, yeah, anyways, so people are worried about inflation. That's not going to happen. Okay. I'm pretty confident about that. Um, so that's one of the data that's coming out this week. The other data that's coming out this week is that, uh, we have, uh, what is it? Continuing initial jobless claims and, um, some, something else. Let me, you know what? Let me actually take a look. So I'm not misquoting here. So let's go out to, I believe it's on Friday cause CPI is supposed to be on Thursday. So, oh yeah, we got P we got PPI also on, um, on Friday. I do believe that's actually, uh, what, whatever, the, whatever the metric is, I'm expecting it to be bullish and, uh, you know, something that wall street would like, uh, th- that's what I'm expecting to happen here. So, um, let's see, we got the PPI and really honestly can't remember what this other one was. Maybe it is on Thursday. I don't know. Yeah. So continuous jobless claims, uh, we've already gone over this. I expect that to remain flat, um, mostly flat or pretty much about where it was. Uh, and initial jobless claims, I'm expecting that also to remain flat or to come in very, very slightly below what they're forecasting here. Maybe like, or even not even that probably slightly, slightly lower, maybe roughly about the same estimate, um, that they had before somewhere in between these two numbers. Okay. Maybe 226, 227, something like that. I don't think that's going to change a lot. So there's other things that we got to talk about. Okay. So we have the bullish seasonality coming for the end of the year, which usually Q4 is always bullish for stocks and well, stocks and crypto, but mostly stocks uh, because crypto is on a four year cycle. But um, again, you know, you got the holidays, people, businesses pick up volume because people go out and spend money on holidays for the kids and families and stuff for Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that jazz. Uh, so I'm expecting markets to go up on that premise alone. Okay. That usually almost always happens. We have a very clear record that Q4 is always historically extremely bullish. Okay. So that's going to go up. Earnings are going to be good. All the bear sentiment about the data is going to get destroyed. Okay. The bears are going to get destroyed. They're going to be like, Oh, well, wow. It's really better than expected. You know, that that's exactly what I'm expecting to be the reaction here. Uh, and then there's crypto. Okay. So crypto, we're in the having year right around the elections, crypto moonshots to the moon during the election year at the end of the year that in my opinion, I think these trusts are going to go to all time highs somewhere between now and the end of November. Um, some of these other kind of more niche grayscale trusts may start popping off in Q1 of next year, but the Bitcoin and ETH related ones, I'm expecting to start moonshotting somewhere between now and probably January. Um, most likely some sometime between now and November, they'll probably be hitting all time highs or getting pretty close to it. Um, okay. So there's that. And then there's also, um, trying to think of what else there was. Um, yeah. Okay. So I can't think of it anyways, let's go ahead and get into the content. So there's, there's a lot of bullish stuff coming up. I'm expecting everything to play out according to the soft landed narrative. I do not expect that to change. Okay. So, uh, 13 to 15 here at support. Again, the markets kind of were a little choppy. I mean, markets were somewhat up today, but crypto was a little choppy. Again, we are going into major earnings season. Um, the elections, the midterms, cause midterms are every two years and also the, uh, data that we're supposed to get this week. So October can be kind of a wild card month, sometimes bullish, sometimes bearish. Uh, if it goes sideways, kind of up and down a little bit, mostly sideways, maybe a little bit up uh, as the month progresses. And then we should take off to the moon in November. I'd be fine with that. Okay. So um, LTCN here, you got your resistance 25 to 27. Again, we, 
Um, I'm, you know what? I'm actually going to delete this line because this is no longer re relevant. It was relevant as long as we retest it as resistance, but we did not. So I'll just get rid of that. So we got to get above the EMAs here in this red zone, and then we would be at 54. So I do think that this white trend line down here is going to hold. It's been tested a lot, has not broken. So measure move here, 102% and 308%. BCHG, kind of a similar story. So we got down to this trend line. It bounced immediately. did not want to drop below that trend line. So I'm expecting the same thing to play out here that we're basically going to go up between next month and, or not next month, this month and next month. Uh, these things are going to start to rise because the LTC and BCHG, they are Bitcoin oscillators. So when Bitcoin goes up, these things should be moonshotting as well. Bitcoin always goes up in November of having years. It typically, generally, always, almost, hap almost always happens. Um, so I'm expecting nothing different this time. I do think Bitcoin will probably be somewhere around seventy, maybe seventy-five thousand by the end of next month. I don't think that's, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's completely out of the question. Uh, I do think that's when the, within the cars for Bitcoin to be somewhere between probably. I would say as a general range, somewhere between 70 to 80,000 by the end of next month, and these should pop off with it. So uh, support down here, 540 to 590, 10 and a quarter to 1270 a resistance. And then we have kind of that 18 to $20 area. And then you got 24 up there at the swing high. So uh, you're looking at roughly about 126%, 260% and 320%. I will be giving you guys an updated Fibonacci retracement level uh, video so we can talk about the maximum profit targets here again because these things, in my opinion, are start going to start becoming relevant soon. The Fibonacci retracements that I've been showing you guys for the longest time now, uh, they're going to probably start getting hit within the next, I'd say about a month, month and a half to up to about six to maybe 15 months from now. Uh, I do think that's likely. So 350 to 420 here at support, $7 to roughly about $8 resistance, then 1050. Again, the target for the wedge is the top of the wedge. That's how these things work. 125% and 195% respectively. ETCG, the ETH, ETH trusts will likely start popping off after uh, Bitcoin. Just so you guys know, also, um, we have not changed anything with our grayscale portfolios yet. Uh, we may buy back in at some point in time. Not sure if we're going to have time to do it this late in the cycle, but if we do, we'll let you know. Okay, so ETCG, 750 kind of to that $8 area. That's where I'm looking at as a buy zone, kind of along this line. If it doesn't hold, which I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, uh, 292 about $5 would be your next best bet. Um, 830 to $10 going to be that current support, and then you have roughly about 13 to 15 18 to about 20. And again, I don't think it gets down to this bottom support because the bottom support is the bear market low. So usually when these things take off to the upside, they don't hit the bear market lows again. Usually once they start taking off to the upside until the next bear market, that's typically how this goes. So 107% to 170%. ETH E. So I'm expecting the white line to hold here, roughly about 1850. And then you got 23... 2330 to 2860, somewhere in there, the uh, cup and handle target up here at 47. Nice big cup, handle, boom, popped off to the moon. Um, as a matter of fact, if I take a look at a couple other charts here of real time examples, you guys can see where this happened as well. Bitcoin, also another example, this is currently playing out, uh, hasn't fully played out yet, but cup and handle, The obviously the handle is where we're in right now, and then boom, it should pop to the upside. And then also we had the exact same thing happen on gold and yeah, gold. And th this was obviously a very, very long time. You can see how ridiculous this is. This was like almost a decade in the making from back from 2011 to 2020 was the cup. And then you had the handle out to 2022 and then boom, this thing took off like a rocket. So you can see what usually happens <laughs> when the cup and handles do play out. It should be pretty obvious at this point. Okay, so going back here, I'm going to give the measurements real quick. So from this white line, you'd be looking at roughly about 54% and uh, roughly about 156% respectively, GBAT. 
this thing hasn't really moved again. I'm not expecting these other grayscale trusts outside of the ETH and Bitcoin related ones to start really ripping to the moon, probably until closer to the end of this year, towards the start of next year. Um, Because again, Bitcoin and ETH are going to take the spotlight first. Uh, And money has to flow out of Bitcoin to go into Ethereum and altcoins uh, before the alts can actually start popping off. Which means that Bitcoin has to add and has has to have a new all time high uh, before that happens. So GBAT here, um, four fifty to five dollars at support, seven ninety to roughly about ten dollars at that current resistance area, and then thirty two at the all time highs. So measured move here, roughly about one hundred twelve to five hundred sixty one percent. Fill G or file G, whatever you prefer to call it. Uh, current support here, 35 to about 42. It doesn't look likely that this is going to break to the downside. I think it's actually going to hold. It's just a question of waiting for it to break above the EMAs. And then the resistance here is 400. And just because the price is below the EMAs and is stuck in between support and the EMAs does not mean that it's not going to break out from the EMAs. It just has to, uh, there, there has to be enough bullishness in the markets enough bullish catalysts like earnings and good jobs data and the fed pivoting some more, give us, give us some more monetary easing and all that kind of jazz. And then eventually this thing will just boom, like a rocket ship straight up. Okay. 880% move GLIV. So this one did actually have a very nice green day, uh, even though it looks like it didn't really do much of anything. Uh, so $12 to about 1450 here. And then the all-time high is at 80. So 500% gain. All right, G-Link. So we had this nice little W pattern. Again, we're kind of pushing up against the top of these EMAs. That's usually a pretty early indication that we might be about to see a breakout. You can see a lot of these downside wicks. Uh, that's the bulls trying to step in there and smash this thing above uh, the bear zone up there. So 39 to 45. 65 to roughly about 85. And then that all time high up there at 220. So if for whatever reason you do get a pullback into these support zones, which at this point, I'm not sure if that would happen, but you know, it's just something to keep in mind. So 112% to roughly about 445% move. GSOL, um, I, I would still say 300 to 350 is kind of going to be the buy zone down there. And then the all-time high at 580. Again, this thing's mostly just going sideways. So it could kind of go anywhere between the bottom of this support and the top of this resistance up here before breaking out. 97% move on this one. Again, if I just kind of show you guys that even though this thing is going up and down, it's mostly just sideways. You can kind of see within this box here, it's mostly just gone sideways. So anywhere in that green box uh, before breaking out to new all-time highs is a good buy. But if you want to uh, basically increase the chances of profit here, then the green box is what you might want to look at down here. Uh, so GXLM still sitting on the white line. I expect this to hold. So that's about fourteen twenty-five. And then you got that twenty twenty and twenty-four dollars up there. Uh, profit targets up here fifty-two to about fifty-eight fifty, and then the. $70 area is kind of that swing high. So that is not the all time high, just so you all know. That's just a swing high. So 310% and 390% respectively. Meta, we're kind of sitting pretty close to the white line. Again, it is below resistance in the EMAs. So that indicates that there's still time to buy. So $10 down there at, at that support zone, $17.50 to uh, 20 bucks at resistance. And then you have the roughly about 70 up there at the all-time highs. So about 114 to 646% move. Zcash. So once again, within these two white lines, I would say anything in there is a good buy zone. If you're looking for the best possible ideal entry, roughly about this 315 is your best bet. You can see it has tested multiple times. I cannot tell you how much longer this is going to last. I don't know. Um, I do know that Bitcoin should be slated to be moving up to all-time highs here pretty quick. I don't know how long that's going to take. Maybe within the next couple of weeks, I would think would be likely when Bitcoin's going to start smashing past 66, 68,000, 70,000. Uh, I, I would think within the next two to four weeks, we're going to see that start happening. Um, but the entire range here is roughly about 315 to 
So above that eight dollars to let's say about nine fifty, and then ten and a quarter, it's going to be that swing high up there. So from the most ideal entry here, you'd be looking at about two hundred to two hundred twenty-five, two hundred and thirty percent somewhere in there. So the other thing I want to go over here is I want to go back in time and give you guys an idea of just how fast this can happen. Okay, this these breakouts. At the, at the start of the parabolic phase of the bull run can happen literally out of nowhere, okay? When we get, like, I'll show you an example. So you see this here? So you get a little tiny break out of this candle and then we go sideways for a couple of, well, basically up and sideways for a couple of weeks. Nothing happens in here, right? And everybody's like, oh yeah, nothing's gonna happen. And then all of a sudden you get a break of this line, break of these, all, these previous candle highs here. And then we go sideways and then, oh sh Oh, snap, son. What happened here? We doubled in price. That, when we get to this point, that's when everybody's going to be interested, okay? That's when the FOMO is going to kick in. So theoretically, people that want to be in early might want to be in down here, all right? Which is kind of like basically pretty much what we're seeing right now. People that want to be in early might kind of want to be in at this macro support, I, I mean, I can't tell you guys what to do, but you got the MACD about to hit the golden cross there. Uh, I mean, we know what happened last time this happened. I mean, just look back here. Get your golden cross right there, October 2023. What happened? LTCN took off from $5 to $50 in a very, very short time frame, uh, roughly about six months. So, um, but the, the point, whoops. Okay, I don't know what the heck I just did here. Hold on a second, y'all. Okay, well, yeah, this this stuff's kind of funky or whatever. So let me go ahead and refresh the page here. I don't know what I just did here. Okay, so let me go back to LC, LTCN real quick, and I'm going to close the video out with this because I want to make this point real clear to y'all. Uh, because again, when these things do start happening, they're going to happen suddenly and aggressively and out of nowhere. But I just I want I want you to understand just how fast this will move. Okay, so from the breakout point, we literally topped out, and this move was ridiculous. Okay, this was absolutely insane. We literally topped out in 35 days from the breakout. And the move was absolutely insane. Okay, it went from 72 to $514. This is what a parabolic blow off top looks like. And it can literally happen that fast. You can see the resistance zones didn't even, the price didn't care, it just went straight through all of them. So when the crypto bull run does start popping off for the final leg during this next parabolic three to 15 months, just expect that it is going to happen extremely fast, extremely aggressively, and it's going to feed on itself. And everybody and their brother is going to want to jump in and get a piece of the pie. And that's, I mean, I can't speak for you guys, but that's when we're going to be looking to take profits when the uh, when the price is just going absolutely AWOL. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.